Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks. Today I wanted to take a moment to talk about the changes to existing gear sets for Update 40. There weren't a whole lot of balance tweaks this patch, but let's jump into the patch notes. There were a few bug fixes for Azerblight Reaper, Cold Harbor's Favorite, and Ranger's Gate, but not too many actual balance adjustments here. We did have the timers on Eye of Noventus and Twilight Remedy extended to 10 second window rather than only 5 seconds, but the changes that most people are probably going to be affected by are the ones to Aegis Collar and Pillar of Nerd. So Aegis Color had the Stamina Recovery bonus removed and replaced with Crit Chance. This was already a pretty strong set, but the stat bonus being changed over definitely helps to solidify it as one of the top DPS options you can go with. And we'll compare it to Pillar of Nern here in just a moment. Pillar also got a similar treatment. The max Stamina bonus has been removed and replaced with Crit Chance. This is also pretty nice as that crit chance is worth a good bit more for your damage than a line of stamina, even on a stamina based character, but it's especially a nice DPS boost on a Magicka character using this set. So I'll break all of that down here shortly. The damage from Pillar of Nern's proc was reduced by 22%. That is definitely the number that I see most people focusing on and worrying about right now. Yes, 22% is a rather large number, but remember the damage from Pillar of Nern as a whole is not just from the proc, but also from the two to four piece bonuses and as we discussed those have been improved so to break down the changes overall i decided the best way to look at these changes to pillar of nern and how that will affect your setup is to have a range of values from different possible scenarios so the first thing we need to find out is how much will that crit chance that they added boost our damage and then the second one is how much of our overall damage was the proc from pillar of nern contributing so in comparing these stats here i used a sort of high end and low end scenario of what what we might see as a damage boost from that 657 crit chance here. With Magicka, it was pretty easy. I could just leave all the other stats even and plug in the extra 3% crit chance. So for the low end, I gave a fairly high overall starting point at 70% crit chance and a rather low crit damage level at only 90%. So in those types of scenarios, when your crit chance is pretty high and your crit damage is not so high, you might see a little bit less of a boost out of this. But on the high end of what you might see as an improvement, if your crit chance was starting out rather low, let's say like 47% here, and your crit damage is maxed out at 125%. Well, I think overall this gives a pretty good range of what we might expect. So essentially it's about a 2% DPS increase. That's what most will probably be looking at from the extra 3% crit chance bonus. Now for stamina, I did something pretty similar, except I also had to remove the stamina bonus from the total stamina amount. So we end up with a smaller increase here when you account for losing that stamina towards your damage. So roughly doing the same calculations, a 1% damage increase for most scenarios going from the max stamina line to the crit chance line. Okay, so we know approximately what we're gaining from adding in the crit chance to that two-piece bonus, but what are we losing from the change to the proc damage? Well, how much overall damage we're losing is going to depend on how much of our total DPS Pillar of Nern was accounting for. If your damage is a bit on the lower end, or maybe you aren't using too many active skills, it is likely that Pillar of Nern is pulling a higher percent of your overall damage than if you have really started to master your class, you're doing a lot of damage, or you're using as many active skills as possible in your setup. So the range I went with here was with Pillar of Nern doing 5% to 15% of your overall damage. So 5% is definitely on the low end there. Usually it is going to account for a bit more than that. And 15% is kind of on the high end. It's usually like 9 to 10% range. That's what we usually see from people when we look at the results from Pillar of Nern. So for Magicka users, for most people, you probably won't even see a difference here as the damage boost from the crit chance is is mostly a wash with the damage loss from the proc. You might notice a tiny gain or a tiny loss depending on those sliding scales we're using there, but overall it's not gonna really make a big difference. On the stamina side of things, if you are getting a lot of benefit from that crit chance line, so your native crit chance is low and your crit damage is high, and pillar is not doing more than eight to 10% of your damage, then you probably won't see much of a difference here. However, you could start to notice a little bit of a drop off with those higher percents of what pillar is contributing to your overall damage. But even so, none of these values, even in the absolute worst case scenarios, are gonna make it a bad set or make or break your damage setups. And in some of the better case scenarios, you might even see a damage improvement here with these changes. So I hope that helps to alleviate a little bit of the worry around this set. I know a lot of people just saw the 22% nerf and didn't really look further into it and thought maybe pillar would be garbage now. And it's definitely not, but it's a little bit more situational than it was before without it being a clear 
clear winner over all of the other proc set options that function in a somewhat similar way. So we talked about Aegis color earlier and that one getting buffed. So how do these two compare now? Well, the two to four piece bonuses are very similar. Maybe a very slight edge to Pillar of Nern here for the extra crit chance versus the weapon and spell damage. But really these are so close, it's about a wash. So then mostly it's just comparing the five piece bonuses and how much DPS we get out of them. So we'll just use the base tool tips for comparison. These are just on a naked character with no stats. For Aegis Collar, we have a total of 4780 damage from the proc, and this amount will come out over 12 seconds, meaning that we have about 398 damage per second as a base if we're getting this on cooldown every 12 seconds. For Pillar of Nern, this was 410 DPS at the base tooltip before update 40. Now it will be 321. So it is about 19% lower on the proc damage than Aegis Collar. However, there are a couple of important things to note with it. The damage from Pillar of Nern is triggered on any damage, meaning that you can immediately have it fire off on pretty much any kind of build without worrying about it. It also sticks to the target once it goes off, meaning that even if the enemy moves around a bunch after the dot is applied, you'll still be getting all of your damage. Now Aegis Color does more damage per second and it's also in a large AoE. However, the trigger condition for it is critical martial melee damage. Now you can get this as a guaranteed proc using Stampede since that's an automatic crit. It meets all of the conditions required. However, because of the proc condition, it isn't quite as universal across builds as Pillar of Nern is. If you're not using Stampede, you will need some kind of martial melee damage in your kit to proc this, and then you're going to be waiting on that to crit as well, which could mean a little bit of downtime between procs, which could swing things in favor of Pillar of Nern again. Not to mention, if stuff is moving around too much, you might miss altogether with Aegis Color. Now, I don't mean to be all negative on Aegis Color. I'm just saying all this so you don't just look at it and think, oh, bigger number must be a better set. For some stuff, it will be. If you can get that proc reliably coming out on cooldown and reliably damaging the target, it will hit harder than Pillar of Nern, and it got that nice crit chance bonus added to it this patch instead of the old stam recovery line. It is a really good set. I just want everyone to understand that, as with most sets in the game, there is a time or place for them, so these definitely could come out ahead of each other for different situations. So looking at these two did have me a little bit curious about some other proc sets in the game that operate with similar conditions. I just did kind of a quick run through. I didn't include Reliquin here. We all know that one is great, but it can't crit, so the base numbers wouldn't quite match up with what we would actually expect to see. Same thing with Azure Blight Reaper. It's one of the best sets in the game. It also can't crit and it scales up, so the numbers would have looked a little weird here compared to these other ones. And I also didn't include some other sets like Rune Carvers that are very dependent on how many dots you have in your kit, but I thought some of these looked interesting. They all have a lot of different strengths and weaknesses to them. Flame Blossom is just a beast if you can get it to hit multiple times on a large enemy like Teleria. Whirl of the Depths is also pretty high up on the list, and most of that damage is in a big AoE. Way of Fire and Poison Serpent were actually fairly high up, but those are limited to single target damage only. And then I was surprised to see Griffin's Reprisal and Venomous Smite. Their average DPS levels were actually the same. Griffin's is just a bit more in that upfront 10 second window, but then it has another 10 seconds following it before it can be activated again. And I believe it is stationary like Aegis Color. Whereas Venomous Smite is only a 15 second cooldown and it delivers an AoE around the target that it's stuck to. And then Unleashed Terror was actually a bit intriguing here. It wasn't super high on the list. However, for a build that is severely lacking in bleed damage, the guaranteed hemorrhaging procs could definitely move it up a lot. Most builds do use Barbed Trap for DPS, so this generally isn't a thing, but I thought it was at least worth the note. And again, this was just a comparison of some sets that function in reasonably similar ways to how Pillar of Nern does with being a DPS proc set, not a comprehensive list or anything like that. Just wanted to show that Pillar of Nern, even in its nerfed form, is still a really good set and the two to four piece bonuses are about as good as you could ask for for DPS now. I hope this video was helpful to break down the changes. Let me know what you all think and also if there's a particular set that you think's being slept on that functions in a similar manner. Thank you so much for watching. Big shout out to my current Patreon supporters and YouTube members. The contributions help a ton to keep the website and YouTube channel going. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougars Bay and the Cougar City Guild, the Order of War Guild, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Iffy, Blakewin 816 Mordecai1212, Santanico, Vidridi, Florian, Phoenix, Nalandia, Unemployed, Chriseliana, Cha-Cha, Technical KO, Cap, Danco77, and Pletpron. Thanks again, and see you later. Uh, bye.